Hey guys, Craig Benz here with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, you'll learn an amazing way to enhance color in your images using a tool called Selective Color. If you've never heard of it, its purpose is a lot like the HSL or Hue Saturation Lightness Adjustment Tool in Photoshop, except that it uses a different approach. And that approach can be a little intimidating at first, and it's probably why you haven't heard about it. But once you master it, it lets you create some very natural and beautiful results. So let's jump right in. We're going to modify this image of a German castle at sunset. And these foreground trees are a little bit too green and yellow for my taste. I want to push them more towards sort of red and orange tones that I think will just make the sunset a little bit more exciting. Before we do that though, let's step back and just look at the theory of how selective color works because once we understand that, it'll be much easier to use the tool. So I've created this test image that has all the various hues of the color wheel, the red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, as well as a few different neutral tones that we can work with for this demonstration. Now you notice on this image, I've also put some labels here because the tool works in the CMYK color space. That is cyan, magenta, yellow, black. K stands for black. And if you're not familiar with that, it's sort of the opposite of red, green, blue. When you use RGB, as you add red, green, and blue, everything gets brighter because it's modeled after the way that a television or a computer monitor works where colored light beams hit the screen and create color or brightness. CMYK is modeled after the way that a printing press works where you take cyan, magenta, yellow, or black ink and spray it onto a white sheet of paper, which makes it a subtractive model. So for example, the way that you would create red in an image in CMYK is you start with white and then you add some magenta and some yellow to it, which is why I've labeled it this way. So I've got magenta and yellow bolded, but I also put a little C for cyan because in reality, most reds will have some level of cyan. Adding a little cyan to the magenta and yellow can make things a little darker. And as you transition to these border colors that kind of stretch between the pure colors, you're not gonna have many colors that are just purely yellow or purely magenta or something like that. So there's always a little bit in there, but it's mostly gonna be magenta and yellow for the red. And if we were to open up the info palette and make sure your tool is set to show you CMYK color, we'll see as we hover here over the reds, we have magenta 84 and yellow 67. That's out of a scale of zero to 100. So there is no cyan or black in this, but a lot of magenta and yellow. You'll also notice that there's a little exclamation point, meaning that this is out of gamut for printing. So these numbers are sort of constrained by the model of CMYK and you may see some occasional results that don't seem to change even when you can see that there's a different color on your monitor. If we move down through the reds here, Notice as we get towards the yellows, we start seeing that there's still a lot of yellow, but now the magenta has dropped down to almost nothing, which is how yellow's made, it's just yellow ink. And if we move on down to the greens, we'll notice that now there's a lot of cyan that has been added to the image. We're at 58 cyan and 83 yellow. So green is a combination of cyan and yellow with sometimes a minimal amount of magenta. So I label these here because when we use the tool, that knowledge is gonna come in very handy. So let's go and open up a new adjustment layer and choose selective color. And that will create a new adjustment layer where the properties are visible in the properties panel or just double click on the icon if you don't see it. And you'll have all these different options. Notice that I did this as an adjustment layer. You could also go up to image, um, got to be on a pixel layer, but you can go to image adjustment, selective color, and just apply it directly to the image without an adjustment layer. But an adjustment layer is usually the way you want to go. It's non-destructive and you're probably gonna make some tweaks to this thing. So within the tool, there are two components. There is this drop down that lets you pick what you're going to adjust. So for example, if I choose yellows, then the tool is going to adjust yellows. So I can start adding black, to it and notice that the yellows are changing in the image as I move the black slider. Now what's going on here is this is creating sort of an invisible mask, almost like a luminosity mask, but based on color that's targeting the yellows in the image. 
And then based on how I set these sliders, it's adjusting the existing values. If we were to look at our CMYK here, we can see the before and after, there is more yellow showing. So if you're following along with the sliders, just note that the way you set the tool here is not the way that it's going to render here. It's conceptually the same, but with CMYK, you can sort of push things around, like adding C, M, and Y all at the same time. It's sort of the same thing as adding black, so that you can get some sort of confusing results. So don't get too hung up on the values here. It's not going to be as clear cut as RGB, but just understand that the theory here that as we add black, we're darkening our yellow, and as we darken the yellow, it's getting more saturated. So remember, this is additive. If we start with white or whatever color we have, and then we start adding more black to it, it gets darker and darker and darker. Or if we remove black as if we'd never added it in the first place, then it gets lighter and lighter until it's practically white in the image here. Now this is set right now in relative mode, meaning it takes whatever amount of these values is in the color currently and adjust from there. So you can always remove a color if it's in the image. You can have less yellow, you can have less magenta, you can have less cyan. You can't always add more. So let's reset the tool and try this again. If we're looking at the yellows here, I really can't add more cyan or magenta because yellow doesn't have cyan or magenta. If I add cyan and I add magenta, you'll see that the border color starts to change because it is targeting these areas that do have a little bit of magenta. So magenta can be modified over on the red side, but on the green side, when I move that slider, nothing's really happening. If I move the cyan slider, then something is happening because these greenish tones have some cyan. So that you need to have some value currently to use the relative mode. That is, if I have, I don't know, 50 points of cyan and I move it up 100%, then I double it to 100. It's kind of the idea. It doesn't exactly work that way, but that's the idea. So I'm increasing the existing amount of cyan or reducing the existing amount. That's relative mode. If you're in absolute mode, then it will just add no matter what. So we, yellow doesn't have any magenta, but in absolute mode, you can simply add full magenta to it, even if it doesn't exist. So you can think about it as relative mode is sort of multiplying by the existing value, and absolute is basically adding to the existing value that you have. Or in other words, another way of thinking of it is, relative is gonna give you probably more natural looking results. It's gonna be harder to crunch everything into one solid blob of color, but absolute is gonna let you push things a lot further or create things that don't exist, such as moving yellow into the magentas because there is no magenta to begin with. And the only way you can make a yellow look red is gonna be in absolute mode, unless you have one of kind of these border yellows because it's, uh, it's pretty hard to tell where you are and you can always add more of these layers. So let's clean things up and let's, let's try a few adjustments here. Let's say we're going to um, affect the overall color balance of the image. Well, we may want to target some neutrals and we'll notice that everything will be affected. So if I go down to my neutrals and I start adding some yellow, notice that my neutral swatch is adjusting. And if we turn this adjustment on or off, the whole color wheel got a little bit more rich, a little bit more yellow. What's happening is it's looking for middle tonal values and it's adjusting them with our neutrals. If we go to say the whites, now it's gonna be looking for highlight areas. So let's add some magenta. And we can see that our brightest swatch here is starting to change colors. So by targeting the highlights with whites, we could do things like change the color of stars. And if we go down to the blacks, we can start changing our shadow values. And here you want to subtract because black pretty much has a lot of everything in CMYK, but you can make some pretty interesting adjustments. When you're down in the white, neutral, and blacks, usually a small amount of adjustment is all you need. It's gonna create some pretty substantial color shift. So a very small shift is all that you need there. Let's clean this up again, and let's look at the theory behind how we're gonna adjust. You know, if we look at this image, we wanna take these 
tones here that look, you know, maybe a little bit orange or yellow or green. It's kind of hard to tell. And these are obviously more green. These are obviously more yellow. But somewhere in kind of this yellow green space is our target. And we need to push it towards the reds. So if we want to do that, let's start with relative mode. We can target our yellows. And to get from yellow up to the reds, you essentially want to add more magenta. And I know I told you that you can't add it to yellow, but remember that not everything's pure yellow. If you already have a little bit of red to begin with, then you can add more magenta to it. So we can add that and notice that we expanded the area that was red, kind of before and after. Now if we go down to the greens, we need to go from green, which has cyan and yellow, and get to just yellow. So we need to remove cyan. So slide that to the left there. And now we've turned the green sort of yellow and the yellow's more sort of red. And that's a pretty good little adjustment. That's about as far as we're gonna go in the relative model. We could try and play with you know, adding a little magenta that's not really doing what we want there. So let's undo that. We could you know, try and add yellow, makes it a little bit more rich. So there are some little plays here. I would always try and slide different values here. You can't just work from theory. It's just too complicated, but understand the theory is a starting point. But if we want to push things a little further, we have two options at this point. We can duplicate this layer. So I'll hit Command J, and now we've created an additional copy of it, and it's continuing to target the underlying colors. Now, keep in mind that the first one shifted the colors more towards yellow and red, so eventually there won't be any greens to adjust as we keep adding more of these. But if I keep duplicating, we're getting more and more pushed towards the red color. And notice that some of these values just never adjust, and that is just the nature of the tool. There are some colors that are gonna move more easily than others. Don't get too hung up on it, just know that you know, if one approach doesn't work, you'll have to try another. So let's clear these, go back to just the original one, and let's switch over to absolute mode. And notice that dramatic shift, because we couldn't add magenta when it didn't exist, but in absolute mode, we can. So we, you know, relative, we can't multiply our way to more. We can't add 100% of nothing. But in absolute mode, we can add just 100% right off the top. So absolute is certainly going to push us to much more of this red spectrum. So these are the kind of adjustments we'll need to make in our image. Let's go ahead and try and see what this looks like in a real image. We'll go create our selective color adjustment. Let's start with our greens here. Remember with our greens, we wanted to remove cyan. And that was pretty subtle, but if you look in the shadow areas before and after, it is going from green to a yellow. It, it matches more of this hazy sunset and I think is a nice enhancement to the image. Probably very hard to see on YouTube, but I think is an important adjustment here. Now let's try the yellows. And with the yellows, we may have some of the you know, yellow green areas, so let's get rid of the cyans. And that's obviously made a dramatic improvement in terms of pushing towards those orange colors we want. And let's try and add a little magenta. And obviously there's quite a bit of magenta here, so we don't need to go crazy to the right. Once we get beyond a certain point, we're not enhancing the trees, we're mostly just sort of polluting the sky with color. So let's throttle that back. And of course, we are adjusting the sky here, which is not what we want. A lot of times, Adjusting with selective color, you can isolate particular colors pretty cleanly. You may not have to mask things. This is not one of those cases. We are going to have to mask the image a bit to target the adjustment so that it's not hitting all of the sky. I don't mind the sky shifting a little bit, but certainly not this much. And some of these shadow areas, I think, are a little bit overdone. Now, we are in absolute mode. That's how we used it last. Let's switch to relative and notice the difference there. We can't push as far into the reds when we push up the tool now. So we're gonna have to make some little adjustments, but I think relative provides a more natural result. The trees look a little bit better. The shadow areas didn't get quite as red and kind of overcooked. And I might bring back the cyan's a little bit. Um, I think that looks pretty good. So let's use that. And we're going to add a black mask by alt clicking on the new mask icon. Grabbing a Wacom pen here, I'm gonna hit B for the paintbrush. And just with white paint at high opacity and low flow, just start to paint in the color that I want. 
And as I said, it's going to bleed over the edges. So, you know, if you really need to be precise, you may want to use something like Quick Select or Luminosity Masks or some other tool to help target because I am going to be bleeding over the edges here from the trees into the city. And you can see as I get up a little further, you know, there, there's some obvious changes there. So I want to be careful. In this case, though, it isn't super perceptible or super easy to see. So instead of just going and getting uber precise, I think we can just feather the result. I'm going to try a little bit of color around the sun and just see if that helps. It's sort of just a subtle little enhancement there. So what I want to do is feather what we've painted here to just create more of a smooth transition. Double click your mask, or if you don't have that, because you may see the selected mask dialog, just open up the properties for your mask, and then you can bring up the feather value, which is essentially applying a Gaussian blur to your mask. And it's obviously too much. Let's bring it back something like that. And that just provides a little bit more of a natural transition to keep things looking fairly smooth across those edges, maybe somewhere around there. Kind of like that result. So we went from here to here and see how we've got that nice orange color in the foreground. And at this point, I think our color adjustments are pretty darn close to done. If I wanted to spend more time playing with that transition edge, I could. But I think at this point, I would just make a couple of quick adjustments. This particular image, the sun just gets blocked from hitting this back part of this tree. I'd like to adjust that. We can do that with some dodging and burning and using luminosity mass. I'll use Lumenzia for that. You can use whatever tool you like, but what we want to do is target the brighter parts of this tree and adjust them without the trunk or other dark areas being adjusted. So an ideal way to do that, let's first create our dodge burn layer and let's put a basic mask on it that we can play with. Actually, I don't think we need a mask. Let's just create a selection instead. What we want to do is click on zone three, see how that works. It seems to target the tips of these trees pretty nicely. We'll zoom in a little bit to see it better. So it is hitting those highlights. I'm gonna adjust this mask by bringing in the black point just to protect those darker areas. And then we'll load that as a selection. So I'm gonna command click on cell. So it's now an active selection and I can paint on my dodge burn layer through that selection. So switch to paintbrush. And if I don't have the color I need already, I can switch over to the eyedropper tool with I and click on the color I want. Probably just wanna match one of these other trees. So we'll use that and zoom in. And when you're dodging and burning, you can be adding color, but you probably wanna be careful not to add too much. We're gonna take our saturation on this color down and dodge and burn with a little bit less saturation. So now, as I said, we're painting through this selection. So it's only letting us paint those brighter tips of the tree, not the shadow areas to enhance this tree. And I could spend a lot of time really working on getting this to look exactly the way I want. But I think you get the idea of what's possible here with some quick adjustments from before to after we've fixed both this tree and this tree, just to give a little more depth and make this gap less notable in the image. It's probably a little bit more red than I want. I would probably desaturate that a bit, um, which you can quickly do by going to image adjustments hue saturation in this case, and just bring down the saturation of your dodge burn layer. So that will bring that down just a bit. Notice I was doing it through a selection, so you may want to deselect before you do that. Lastly, let's use the lasso tool and create a little selection of an area we'd like to vignette, which I think just brings more nice attention to the sky. So looking at the original to the end, you can see with just a, a couple of quick steps, we really just had to adjust a couple of sliders with selective color, mask to the appropriate areas, and then optionally do some dodging and burning and vignetting. And we've created this much more interesting scene now that is more inviting and warm. So I encourage you to try out the selective color layer. Uh, it's a really powerful tool. You'll definitely have a few questions as you get going. Feel free to send me an email or reply to this video and let me know what questions you have, and I'll be happy to do a follow-up video if we need to, or just answer any questions you might have. And please be sure to subscribe to my newsletter to be informed of new videos as they become available.